Many people ask, why all the fuss about greenhouse gases and CO2? After all, gases like CO2 aren't necessarily toxic, in fact plants really like them. Well, the problem is these gases trap heat. The story goes way back to the 1800s when scientists first discovered the abilities of these heat trapping gases. We get energy from the sun, which warms the Earth's surface during the day. But at night, this heat then gets radiated back out to space. Now scientists calculate that if all that heat was lost each night, our Earth would be 33 degrees colder each morning. So they noticed that some invisible force in the atmosphere was trapping the heat. So what was it? In the 1850s, scientist John Tyndall tested these gases from our atmosphere to see which ones were actually trapping heat. First, he removed the trace gases and started with the most common gases, nitrogen and oxygen, which make up almost 98% of our atmosphere. When he applied heat, or infrared radiation, to his surprise, all the heat slipped straight through. He concluded that if our atmosphere was made up of only nitrogen and oxygen gas, then we would freeze every night. So then he tested some of the trace gases, and to his surprise, these trace gases absorbed and trapped the heat radiation, and thus discovered the greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, water vapour. Good work, John. Thanks, Graham. So it makes sense. Nitrogen and oxygen are just simple two-atom molecules that don't trap any heat. Whereas the greenhouse gases are more complex and have more than two atoms. They have all these extra bits on them to trap the heat. When in balance, as greenhouse gases keep Earth at a stable temperature. But if we add more greenhouse gases, then more heat is trapped in our inner atmosphere and less heat escapes. And scientists are measuring that our outer atmosphere is getting cooler while our inner atmosphere is getting warmer. It's about physics and energy balance. So think of the simple example of two cars parked on a sunny day. Both get the same energy from the sun and their dashboards start to heat up and then start radiating heat. Imagine one car has windows down and the other has the windows up. Which one will be hotter? Both cars are getting the same energy from the sun, but now they have different ratios of energy in and energy out. So basically, adding more greenhouse gases is like slowly winding up the windows and trapping more heat. So that's why scientists expect a warming trend to continue in the coming decades. It's basic physics. This is all about changing the ratio of heat in versus heat out. So that's why we expect to see much more attention paid to how we manage and reduce greenhouse gas emissions, which is good because in agriculture, we don't want things getting much hotter especially because a warmer world will affect their seasons, weather patterns and variability. So whilst Australian agriculture contributes around 16% of national emissions, our farmers and scientists are doing some great work looking at how we improve fertiliser, grazing and energy efficiency, as well as how we improve the carbon levels stored in our soils and vegetation. And we're seeing more and more supply chains looking at ways that they improve their emissions performance. So we need to get ready. And that's why Australia's carbon farming, research, development and extension effort is all about how we improve our knowledge, reduce emissions and support our farmers and industries to get on with the job of growing food and fibre for growing global markets.